You're listening to The Mojo with Steph Renee. Weekdays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Exclusively on 900 a.m. WURD. Perhaps, perhaps, I can't say for sure, because there were so many hits from the Oscar award-winning soundtrack of Purple Rain, but that song definitely is up there for most people who look at that historic moment where music and film came together and influenced generations uh, before and after with the boldness of being able to tell that story and, and sing that music and share that music so expertly that came from this little teeny tiny package of a man from Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is Stephanie Renee welcoming you back to today's Mojo. And joining us now on the line is filmmaker Ralph L. Crowder III. He is producing a series called Controversy, an ungentrified view of Prince's death and the city of Minneapolis to give us an inside perspective on how the club scene that nurtured a young Prince Rogers Nelson is worth study for us who are continuing to mourn the loss. Good morning, Mr. Crowder, and welcome to WURD. Oh, gee, Sister Stephanie, it's uh, very good to be um, at an independently owned black radio station. It's a beautiful thing. (laughs) And I salute you for having this particular conversation because we definitely need to talk about our issues and explore those dynamics that uh, are a part of our community. Absolutely. Well, I know you do a lot of work using your camera lens to help us challenge some of the perceptions that exist in our community as it relates to racial dynamics in our our society. And so, you know, before we get to some of the larger social justice justice work that you're doing, let's stay in this print space for a moment because uh, showing the racial dynamics that have existed in the city of Minneapolis and how uh, Prince with his rebel spirit was able to develop despite some of the things that might have discouraged him is an important story for us to make sure that we're keeping on our lips, particularly as a black community, while we're uh, mourning his loss. No, no doubt about it. And you know what? Uh, as we as we um, mourn the death of Prince, and as we uh, explore these uh, issues, we have to also internally and externally uh, look at ourselves and, and our relationship. Because in many ways, the, this the passing of Prince is uh, you know reflects a lot of the dynamic dynamics happening in our own families and our in our families and our communities and our lack of ownership in the institutions around us. You know the thing. Uh, I would initially just say, just coming off of the uh, Purple Rain and uh, the soundtrack and When Doves Cry, you know, that particular movie, like like you said, was definitely groundbreaking, but it also gave kind of a false impression of Prince's identity. Um, you know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of discussions. You know, Prince Prince is a black man. His parents were black. Yeah. His mom, his mom was not white. And uh, in Purple Rain, you could almost see the... Um, you know, the Hollywood's uh, need to kind of misrepresent uh, Prince as being maybe a biracial child in this city and this story around that. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Prince is a black man who grew up in a historic black community uh, in the city of Minneapolis. And I think, you know, we need to say that first. And um, it, 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 it kind of hurts actually being here live and direct from Minneapolis to see uh, people uh, congregated and everything um, in front of First Avenue, a club that is known for its uh, kind of blatant um, mistreatment of uh, black artists, um, the patrons and and those who live in the black community. Um, You know, part of our series, the uh, ungentrified view of Prince's death in the city of Minneapolis explores why you know, Prince moved to uh, buy ownership, his own club, ironically enough, three blocks down the street from First Avenue, a club that he couldn't even perform at, not only after his first album, For You, came out in uh, the year of 1978, but First Avenue didn't even let Prince perform um, in their club until he appeared um, on Saturday Night Live in 1981. Mm-hmm. Which is which is which is crazy if you think of uh, the, all the people who paid homage to Prince and uh, you know was mourning his death in front of that club and and if you were ignorant you know what I mean the corporate media is definitely uh, showing Minneapolis to be exclusively white 
that, you know, <laughs> Prince was not loved by black folks or the black community, which is a different conversation, too. But we have to explore the death of Prince and really not only look at Prince, but look at ourselves. Yeah. Because this is just another example of uh, how we are disconnected from each other as family and how we're disconnected from taking ownership to telling our stories. Yes. Yeah, well, so one of the things that I want to go back to that you said and and I think is worth further exploration is the issue with ownership in a space yeah. where a genius like Prince would be welcomed as family and given access to that stage and that talent be nurtured by the community that helped produce it. Uh, and Philadelphia certainly suffers from that same problem. We have seen a ton of live music venues come and go in this city, largely because we're leasing spaces and we're at the whim of the developers and what have you, the whole uh, idea for what should be uh, presented and nurtured on these live stages with so many world-class musicians gets lost in the conversation about dollars and cents or racial bias on top of all of that. Yes, and the irony of us that continue to stand with people when they die, but we don't stand with them while they're living. So, for example, uh, when Prince owned his own club, Glam Slam, uh, it, it, it was during the time in, in all, all of our communities where we were under attack through the crack invasion in our neighborhoods, right? Yeah. And so Prince's Club was actually under a lot of pressure because there were a couple of incidents of violence and, and uh, some shootings outside the club that city officials and the business community of downtown Minneapolis put a lot of pressure uh, on that particular establishment, which was Prince's Club, a exclusively black-owned, the first uh, full-service black-owned nightclub establishment in the city of in downtown Minneapolis. But Glam Slam literally had to change its name, rebrand itself to a club known as The Quest. And there was so much pressure on that particular club that they had to close their doors. Mm. Now, the, the interesting thing is, who stood up for Prince. Now, was, did all the white liberal folks that you saw mourning his death and those politicians that uh, claimed him as one of their own and a, a hometown kind of a hero that uh, put Minneapolis and the state of Minnesota on the map, if you will, uh, did they stand for him in the politics of his uh, club that he owned at that particular time? Right. And, and, and what is the irony of closing down Prince's club and then you have a, a, a white-owned strip club literally three blocks down the street from Prince's Old Club, and naked black women are dancing for money, and it's a, a well-known drug establishment. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's... it's Whew. There's I mean, so, it's, a deep, it's a deep thing, you know what I'm saying? It's it is. And it hurts. It, it, really it is because this goes back to and and you know social media uh, it, this is a, a subject that we're going to be exploring next week uh, at a forum that uh, the station is hosting but you know the con- the whole idea of how we are prepared to see us speak about us as black folks in the community and what we're willing to support is an ongoing conversation we have here of course being an independently owned black talk radio station and uh Uh, And thinking about the responsibility that we have to present uh, parts of the story that you won't get on mainstream media and that sometimes we're very hesitant to talk about among ourselves. But this idea that you've just brought up of us being more comfortable seeing black women half naked dancing for money instead of supporting a club that has a stage that is open to innovative artistry and, you know, and how that intermingles with the element that just causes trouble outside of the club that is not based on what's happening on the stage, but it impacts that uh, is something that we got to deal with as a community. Yes. And, and, and we also have to deal with those who are brave and fearless enough to not be bought and to, to stand up and claim ownership as Prince did uh, to, to be pioneers in that. And we have to stand with them in life. You yeah. understand? Yes. Mourn for, let's mourn for, you know, as we grieve in death, but let's stand for each other in life, too, because, you know, it, it takes a lot of courage 
and it definitely takes, um, and it, it, it sometimes you have to sacrifice the instant gratification of uh, immediate um, support and uh, monetary support. So, for example, you're an independently black-owned station. Now, you could change your business brand and appeal more to corporate sponsorship and, and, and um, um, definitely be more supportive and, and water down your intent to have these particular conversations that we need to have. But there's an urgent need for us to have our own institutions so that when we breathe these conversations in the atmosphere, we're actually healing ourselves. Yeah. And, and that's the point where we need to get back to. We need to be able to stand up as free black men and women and tell our stories and have ownership in those institutions so that we can support ourselves when we need to tell those stories. Indeed. Well, as a filmmaker, I'm sure that you have a lot to say about that in terms of the kinds of projects that you choose to work on and uh, whether or not there would be you know, more financial opportunity for you if you took on different subject matter. But in addition to this new series that you're developing about the realities on the ground in Minnesota, you've also worked on a project called the Hands Up, Don't Shoot uh, Youth Movement. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, and, and really that's that's a direct tie into the, the issue of what we're seeing with Prince right now. You know, we're seeing, uh, we're basically we went down to, I was like anybody else, watching corporate media um, tell this particular story or this version of the uprising. We didn't call it riots. We called it uprising mm-hmm. in Ferguson, Missouri. Yes. As a result of a death of another young black man, Mike Brown, in this little town that I never knew of called Ferguson, Missouri. Now, because of the lack of our own um, uh, version of telling whatever the conditions are in that particular city that are reflective of all of our cities that we live in, we we found a need, a desperate need to go down there, be on the ground, and really tell a deeper um, story about the people in Ferguson about the issues of the uprising that took place and actually bridge the connection of the themes of Ferguson that really um, turned out to be, as we know, the theme of Philadelphia, the theme of Los Angeles, the theme of Minneapolis, the theme of Newark, New Jersey, and keep on naming the stories. You know, the issues that we experience in our communities are not in isolation. So it's no coincidence that now we're seeing the pain uh, 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 you know, Prince was a powerful artist, and I think all artists that are vulnerable in that vulnerable space are willing to absorb a certain amount of pain um, that they feel not only from their personal experience, but as artists, we reflect life. And um, we can see the pain now, even in the conversations with Prince and what's being said about him not having a will. Yes. Well, well, well that should speak to the pain of his family experience. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Well, or the political dynamics of those of us who have money and how that might car- cause additional harm in our family. So, again, as we look at Prince and we, and we look at this moment, let's understand that we've been so disconnected as family that we almost have more connection with our artists than we do with our own families. Mm-hmm. So, as we look at this issue with Prince, take the time out to tell those family members that you may be disconnected from or those friendships that you may be dis- disconnected from, let's try to heal this moment and tell people we love them. Yeah. Let's try to let's try to come more together and not more apart because we're in a dangerous space. See, when we when we're uh, not connected to family, we don't have any ownership in our communities, and we can't tell our stories and our tongues are bought. I mean, that's not a that's not a good future for the preservation of a people. Indeed. Listen, I'm shaking my virtual tambourine. My my producer knows that we talk about that just as as a a sign of affirmation in any conversations that we have here on the air. When I'm shaking a tambourine for you, I'm in 100 percent agreement with you and trying to elevate the point that you just made. The vulnerability that makes an artist like Prince so exceptional is also the vulnerability that we as 
as a people are in the midst of right now when we don't own ourselves, our images, any of the real institutions in our community. And we've got to be consciously moving toward an act of self-preservation that uplifts all of that in the way that you have just so eloquently described. Please let our listening audience know how they can support you as a creator and the work that you are releasing into the world a little bit better if they're just learning about your work today. Oh, definitely. You can definitely reach out to us um, through our website, Freedom radio and tv.com freedom radio and tv.com or you can call us uh, on our hotline at area code 612-460-1772 okay wait, get, uh, wait wait i was gonna say slowly please <laughs> okay. uh, all right we're gonna do the slow-mo area code 612 uh-huh 460 uh-huh one seven seven two, and that's the hotline number. Okay. And then I'll say the website just one more time, real slow. Freedom Radio and TV dot com. Excellent. So yes. Do you have a, a, a potential release date for? Uh, you know, are you going to do episodes in succession, or are you going to release the entirety of this controversy series at one time? Um, we are going to do a few things. We're going to do a media, a specific media piece around the controversy series um, as a as a as a as a intentional media reflection of, of Prince of Death coming out here within the next couple of weeks. We've just been kind of uh, actually sending out little blurbs uh, with that as a pre advertisement for that. But we're also going to, going to host a uh, community. Uh, celebration uh, uh, that we call, we're just going to bring it back to the park. It's going to be the voice of Minneapolis, and we're going to um, actually allow black people in Minneapolis to tell their own stories so that we can actually uh, be that voice that you're not seeing in corporate media. Mm -hmm. um, because the reality is, too, that, you know, we also have to honor those who have talent and who have maybe a prophetic gift, if you will, uh, yes. in, that art in, in that artistic space or even in an intellectual space and beyond. We have to honor our, our own in our hometowns first. And the reality is, is that Prince really wasn't loved initially like we see by the black community until he really got on with the major record deal. Now, there was a lot of people that definitely acknowledged him as a talented artist, but Prince went through a lot of internal pain within the community dynamics, too. Yeah. Now, there was a lot of uh, growing that the community did with Prince, and there was definitely a lot of, uh, I'm not saying there wasn't love initially, but there were some dynamics around that. So my point is, is that in Philadelphia right now, you have a talented young brother or sister who is basically being ignored because for some reason or another, their talent might be a threat to the existing uh, status quo of whatever, uh, you know, the, the norm is in Philly. Right. So, um, their talent is, uh, uh, is, is feared, put it like that. Their talent in Philadelphia is feared, and so they have to actually move outside of Philadelphia to be acknowledged first, and then all of a sudden Philly gets on with them. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I so do indeed. Let's groom our talent in our hometowns first. And I know that's kind of almost like a biblical reference, and it, it could go against some things, but we have to acknowledge our own first. And, and because we have plenty of talent in our communities that can be a gift to the world, just like Prince. But um, let's try to have more ownership so that we can do that, because the lack of ownership that we have will not lend any of us to be a support to any talent that we have because we're going to all be in competition to get them white folks money because we're ignoring the money that black folks have to support their own. Indeed. Well, we thank you so much for preaching that good word today here on WURD. And we hope that this won't be the last time that we can engage you in a conversation about telling our own stories, about lip uplifting our own communities and certainly investing back in our communities with all this history and legacy that we share. Ralph Crowder III, it has been a pleasure. Oh, peace, peace. And, and thank you for keeping strong over there in Philly. And you guys keep going. Don't stop. We need you. Please, Philadelphia and beyond, support this radio station because we only got a few left. Yes, sir. Take good care. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.
And again, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who want to learn more about what Ralph Crowder III is doing with his camera and how he's bringing the Minneapolis black community together to acknowledge and uplift their own, his website again is freedomradioandtv.com. And there is a hotline number for those of you who prefer that voice to voice contact. It is area code 612 460 one seven seven two. You've been listening to the Mojo with Steph Renee. Weekdays, ten AM to one PM, exclusively on nine hundred AM WURD. 